festival. Um, I want to welcome Jennifer and Michael back one more time um, for a quick little chat. And then this piece has um, some big setup. If you know John Cage's water walk, that's a bathtub, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yeah. I don't get in it, thankfully. <laughs> Thank you. You never know with John Cage what he's going to make you do. Uh, so I'm really glad I don't have to get into the bathtub. Um, Jennifer, can we just talk a little bit more about the work that the Rube Goldberg Institute, I always forget I'm wearing my mask, the Rube Goldberg Institute does. And uh, I know the mission is obviously to promote Rube Goldberg, but what else? Well, we're hoping to inspire a whole generation of problem solvers, critical thinkers, people who, you know, I, I believe rules are meant for breaking. I actually think Rube thought that too. Think a little outside the box. Look at what's around you and how you can affect change with those things. <laughs> Um, we, we are very involved in STEM and STEAM with our competitions. Uh, we also have a, a large licensing <laughs> program. Uh, so, you know, we usually have a one task sponsor that um, I call it the single balloon in the Rube Goldberg parade. <laughs> and so one year we had Apply a Band-Aid. It, it was sponsored by Johnson & Johnson. Another year it was uh, pour a bowl of cereal, and that means by General Mills. YKK was uh, zip a zipper. And um, so every year we have a, a single host, single sponsor, and every machine in the competition has to complete that task. So it's, it's just a wonderful synergy. And as you saw in the, in the you know, films that we were showing in the venue, um, you could see how much fun the kids are having. I've had testimonials from parents and teachers and just all across the board. We've been doing it since 1988, and we have just grown and grown and grown. I've been thinking about that because I, I watched many of the videos of the, uh, the competition of the Rube Goldberg machines, and I mean, it just seems like people are getting better and better at building these machines. And I think about that because like athletes are getting better and better you know, at, at doing what they do. I was just watching football and they're saying, oh, these guys are gonna be able to make 70 yard field goal kicks soon. And in my field, musicians are getting better and better all the time. And so maybe you know, this is in Michael's realm or Jennifer's realm um, as a kind of cultural philosophical thing, but why is that? I think it's because of the digital world we live in. I mean, YouTube changed the entire story at Rube Goldberg. Uh, you know, we, we were able to reach um, sort of critical mass. People could, you know, post their machines. Uh, suddenly, he went from being sort of hashtagable to being viral. <laughs> and then suddenly influencers showed up, and it was just the snowball. And now if you Google Rube Goldberg or Rube Goldberg machine, millions of results up here. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was not possible before YouTube. And I think too, I mean, to a certain extent, you know, if you're building this machine and then you go online and see, say, Joseph Persher's machine, you go, oh my God, I got to up my game. <laughs> like a you little do bit. have to up your game when you're comparing yourself to him. Yeah, or, or you know, many of the people that are putting themselves on YouTube. Well, it's also hard. You know, our competitions, you have to like load your machine into the back of like your mom or dad's car. You know, it's hard if you're moving it around <laughs> to get it to work every time. And the funny thing is, my grandfather didn't care if it worked or not. He just wanted to make you laugh. And when I tell that to people, it really concerns them. You know, they don't really know how to deal with that. <laughs> but that's sort of what it was. That's great. That's fantastic. Michael, how did you get involved with the Institute? Uh, Jennifer and I got introduced through a mutual friend. And okay. uh, you have an arts management background. I mean, where, where, where run museums and cultural institutions okay. for uh, the last two decades. And you're like, okay, I'm just going to make people laugh now with Rube Goldberg machines. I thought about how we um, create some meaningful impact. Take what they've been doing, bring it to a new generation. Think about how we might uh, how we might up the game and up the ante a bit. So. I would like to make anything, you know, that worked at all, but <laughs> it just doesn't happen. <laughs> I mean, I, I see some of these things, I just can't even imagine how they come up with, with it and how it, I mean, it, it's a whole different brain, I mean, to me. Every year, every year in the competition, well, this year's task, I should say, if you are listening at home and you have a kid, uh, 8 to 18, who wants to build a Rube Goldberg machine, this year's task is open a book. And so we, I, I just know we're gonna see Harry Potter theme machines. And then we might see like, you know, Joseph and the Coat of Many Colors theme machines. And we're just gonna see this amazing array of narratives. And that's the difference. You know, Domino Run is spectacular when it works and the colors and the patterns. But we tell a story. And, you, and if it's funny and it makes you laugh, even better. 
Fantastic. So the last piece on the program is called Water Walk by John Cage. Anybody know it? Anybody know this piece? How many <laughs> people? Okay, great. Anybody have the score? Put it away. <laughs> I don't want you watching the score while I do this. Um, so this piece, I really think, relates to Rube in many respects. I mean, first of all, what, what, what Cage asks, uh, well, if, if you don't know John Cage, just quickly, he was one of the most important composers of the 20th century. And he did write some seminal works. He did a lot of things with Merce Cunningham in the dance field. He did some very seminal things in music, but he's almost as important or more important as a philosopher because he believed that really pretty much anything that produces sound was music. He also had a wicked sense of humor, uh, much like Rube Goldberg, which is not something that people think about with Cage. We've gotten very serious with him, and I'm not sure he would have liked that. I mean, th the same kind of pedestalizing we've done with Mozart and Beethoven is starting to happen with Cage. And I think he would have thought it funny <laughs> and also not kind of liked it at the same time. And so like with Water Walk, it is meant to be funny. He puts the, 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 the performer through a bizarre sequence of moves that, you know, and it's not even at the end. I, I always at the end, you have a cocktail and you take a sip, but it's not. You drink the cocktail about three quarters of the way through the piece. There's still more Just bizarre. to get through it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right, exactly. Well, the funny thing, <laughs> I didn't realize you were going to do this live. I thought we were going to watch the video, oh. <laughs> which I've seen a hundred times. No, no, you don't, yeah, we, we don't know each other well yet. Uh, <laughs> I always want to do it live if I can. Well, I, this is exciting. Uh, it's very exciting. And so, I mean, you know, what, what's really happening, so I, I was practicing it for a long time, because what, what I thought was I'll just memorize all of the moves, which you have to do if you're going to do water walk. And so it's like, okay, squeeze the duck, hit the bathtub with the pipe, uh, let out the steam, come over here, do this, do that, do all of these things. And that's right. But then when we got in here today and we're, we're practicing it, what I, I <laughs> was not paying much attention to is that uh, Cage is very meticulous about the timings. He, he wants you to have a timer. And if you watch, he's got a timer in his hand on the video, and everybody else has a timer. Um, so thankfully, I want to really thank, speaking of which, David Wetzel here is our technical director for Access Contemporary Music. Thank you. Um, with an enormous amount of help from the technical staff here at Roulette, uh, because it seemed like a really good idea to bring in an inflatable bathtub instead of a, a regular bathtub. But um, what you, what I wasn't thinking about, speaking of like, I could never build a Rube Goldberg machine. I inflated the tub, no problem, but what I didn't realize was before you put the water in it, what you wanna do is, is plug it up. There's like a little drain in there and you wanna, <laughs> you wanna plug that drain. And I didn't do it. And so there was water leaking, we had to move all these sections of the stage and they had to mop under it. And so I really wanna thank the, the Roulette technical staff because they went over and above um, for this completely ridiculous show that we're putting on today. Um, and yeah, so anyway, what I was talking about is that, uh, oh, and I have a glove for the steam too, because I do love John Cage, um, but the, the, uh, the pressure cooker that, that David came up with, I think Cage could have used it himself. It's from like 1960, right? Yeah, 64. So yeah, I don't want to lose a hand uh, to John Cage. So <laughs> it's very dangerous. So I'm going to wear a glove for, for that aspect of it. But what we realized is um, basically think of me as like a hapless Amazon employee. Um, you know how they, get, they can get fired by, you know, by text or whether they wear this little thing? That's what the timer is. And, and John Cage is like Jeff Bezos telling me what to do and when to do it. So there's times when I'm like really hurrying fast, you know, and there's times when I'm just sitting around waiting for the next event. <laughs> um, and it's, it's just a lot of fun. I really think it showcases Cage's sense of humor. It, you know, what we were talking about with Rube Goldberg, this kind of progressive nothingness. I mean, all of that, I think Cage shares that philosophy wonderfully, and we really see it in Water Walk. So let's have a big hand, please, for our guests. Jennifer George, Michael Glickman, please. Thank you so much. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to perform Water Walk by John Cage. 